I received numerous requests to make a video about declaratively managing secrets with Nix over the last couple of weeks, and so today I wanted to cover a way to integrate SOPS, a simple secrets management tool, into NixOS. By the end of this video, you will have set up a system that can decrypt an easy-to-edit file of your preferred format and then pass the secrets inside it to services and programs, or simply leave them in an easy-to-access location where you can read them yourself. To bridge the gap between SOPS and Nix, we will use SOPS Nix, but before we can make use of it, let's set up SOPS itself. SOP supports multiple encryption methods, and one of the most basic ones is using H. So easy in fact, we can straight up generate an H key from your SSH key, which I assume most of you already have. Here are the two commands you can use to generate your keys. First one generates a new key and puts it into .config slash SOP slash H slash keys.txt. And the second command does the same thing, but instead of generating a new key, it simply converts your private SSH key. This means that the output key will always be the same if you use the same SSH key, but one important thing to note is that if you are using the second command, your SSH key needs to have no passphrase or else it won't work. The key we just made will be used when we run SOPS a little bit later. But before we begin configuring SOPS, we also want to get a public version of this key. So just run this command, which you can also find in the link in the description. Next thing you want to do is create a .sops.yaml file somewhere near your NixOS configuration, and it's going to hold creation rules for your secrets files. Those rules basically define locations of your secret files relative to the .sops.yaml and public keys, which are going to be used to encrypt and decrypt those files. For our use case, we want to have at least one public key defined at the top, and at least one creation rule that references it. You can basically just copy this file one to one, only changing the key itself so you can actually edit your secrets, optionally a name for it, and the path where you want your primary secrets file to be. SOPS supports YAML, JSON, ini, .env, and binary formats, so choose whichever one you like. Now to finally create a secrets file, cd into your desired directory and run SOPS space name of the secrets file. It will open your preferred text editor, defined by the editor environment variable, and you can now simply fill the file with whatever you want. I'll put some stuff from the Nick SOPS official GitHub page here for later. After saving and closing your editor, you will see that every field gets encrypted. You can now safely store or send this file anywhere, including public git repos, because the only way to decrypt it now is to have the private key that we created earlier. If we run the SOPS command again, the file gets decrypted once again, and we can easily add or remove any data. A basic SOPS setup is complete, and you can already use it as is. However, we obviously want to go one step further and integrate our secrets into the NixOS configuration. We are gonna be using a simple flake setup for it, so open your flake.nix file and add this SOPS nix input. You can optionally make its nix packages follow your primary nix packages. Pass the inputs to nixOS modules with special args and open the nixOS configuration file. Here we can finally import the module and begin managing the secrets with nix. First thing we want to do is define the path to secrets file and its file type. Next, add private key path to sops.h.keyfile attribute, but make sure that it only contains the key itself, no extra comments. Nix will read this file when you rebuild the system and decrypt your secrets if it exists. If it cannot find the file or the key is incorrect, it will simply skip this step and build your system successfully, albeit without secrets. This means that you can safely distribute your configuration to other people without worrying about leaking private information or them not understanding where secrets come from. Use the sops.secretset option to define paths to your secrets with slashes representing subrecords or subclass values from the secrets file. I'm still using an example secrets file from Sopsnix GitHub page, and after rebuilding the configuration with following options, we can try checking our decrypted secrets with a simple cat command. All secrets belong to the root user by default, so run sudo cat slash run slash secrets slash example key. Keys are nested in the secrets directory the same way as in the dix file or in your preferred file format secrets file. So my service slash my subdir slash my secret will be located under slash run slash secrets slash my service slash my subdir slash my secret. Now if you want to assign another owner to the key, simply pass their name to the secret either as a string manually or by grabbing it from your config. After rebuilding, said user will have access to the key in the same location without sudo. Another important thing to know about secrets is that Sopsnix does not allow interpolating them into the files during the build step because that's a security risk. So instead of creating scripts or services that have values embedded directly into them, you need to read them from files afterwards. Sounds complicated? Let's create a simple systemd service to better understand how we could do that. We can begin by defining the service itself, which will contain the script that we want to run when we start it, and the service config. In the service config, we want to assign a new system user to the service and also its working directory. Now we want to actually define the system user like so, and make sure that our secrets belongs to it. 
Let's come back to the service and in the script we can now do whatever we want with the path to the secret, like simply printing it out or using cat command to get the value. This demonstrational script simply echoes some stuff into a text file, but you can use yours to fetch data from the internet using a secret API for example. Once again, notice that we are not interpolating the secret itself anywhere and this service won't know any secret data during the system build phase. Only afterwards when the service is started, it will run a cat command to retrieve the password. Rebuild your system, start this service that we just created and check out the file in our services home directory. As you can see, it successfully used the secret password to fulfill its malicious intents. And now I would like to thank the sponsors of this video, specifically Victor Vintores for a 20 euro per month subscription, Hoskins for a 10 euro per month subscription, Linux Rocks for a 10 euro per month subscription, PEZ for a 10 euro per month subscription, Not a Nut for a 5 euro per month subscription, Kinzoku for a 1 euro per month subscription, and also JerOM for a 50 euro recent donation, Coffee Supporter for a 10 euro recent donation, Thomas for a 10 euro recent donation, and answering their question, I'm thinking about making an XFS course in the future, however, currently I'm pretty busy, so we'll see how it goes. Nixjoyer for a 6 euro recent donation, Meji00 for a 5 euro recent donation, Gate on the Page for a 5 euro recent donation, Yogurt for a 1 euro recent donation, and also Aiding Bad Ponder for a 10 euro super thanks on YouTube, and Dude9501 for a 2 dollar super thanks on YouTube. As usual, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you are feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.